In this video, we are going to look at federated learning in the most simple manner. Let's say you have a group of friends and each of you has your own notebook. You all want to solve a puzzle together, but instead of sharing your notebooks, you only share your ideas. You work on the puzzle in your own notebook, then send your updates to a group leader. The leader combines everyone's ideas to make better progress on the puzzle and then shares the updated solution with the group. This is basically how federated learning works. It allows devices like phones or computers to learn from their data without ever sharing it. Let us understand this with a more real world scenario. Now before we go ahead and look at an example, let's look at the formal definition of federated learning. Right, so it is basically training a decentralized machine learning model. Now what this basically means, we'll be understanding by the end of this video. Right, so Let's build up to federated learning. So as I said, we'll be discussing a real world scenario. So in this case, uh, say you launch an application that requires constant updates to stay up to date with the latest trends and changes, right? So say for example, this particular application is a self-driving car, right? Now, in order for this app to constantly learn about, say, the new traffic rules, the new turns or the new diversions, this app will need to be trained on the new updated data. And then that updated data needs to uh, find the new learnings and then to be sent on the user's device. Right. So now the normal way or the traditional approach of doing this would be through centralized data that is used by the machine learning algorithms. Now what happens here is basically the data is collected from all the users or from all the clients. Basically the millions of devices that are using that particular application will be having some data collected over time. Now all that data is going to be sent to a central database. Right. Now what happens is using this particular central database, a machine learning algorithm is applied and it is used to find the new patterns or the new learnings and further make predictions. Right, so in this case, I have shown a neural network, but it could be any machine learning algorithm. So once the model is trained on this particular central database, it is deployed back to the users. Right, so basically the clients or the users are sending data to the central database. And what the central database is doing is it is sending the new update or the new version of the particular app back to the users. All right, so periodically new data is collected and sent to the server to retrain and then update the model and then the central database sends the updated version back to the users. This happens in a loop, right? So say for example, we have a smart keyboard, right? So you guys must have noticed whenever you type a particular sentence or a particular uh, word, in the beginning of the word itself, you get suggestions like PA could be part or it could be paragraph, right? So these suggestions also work on a similar principle. So this smart keyboard app basically collects your data over time and then sends it to the central server, right? From all the users, the data that is collected, it is sent to the central server. Then that server trains the model to improve the word predictions or the auto corrections. So this is basically how the machine learning algorithms use centralized data to update the model versions, right? But apart from the advantages of this particular method, there are some disadvantages as well. The main issue is the security issue or the data privacy concerns, right? Collecting sensitive data like messages or say health records risks exposing the user's private information. Now data breaches or unauthorized access can lead to severe consequences. We all know that, right? So data loss is another uh, disadvantage and it is difficult to handle Overloading basically uh, the updates that are being sent through the network can cause delays or latency, right? So there, that's another disadvantage. So now you guys must suggest that instead of sending the data to a centralized unit, why not train it on the individual devices itself, right? So again, this method is going to ensure faster updates since there's not going to be any uh, network breakdown uh, involved. And there is also going to be more privacy since there won't be any data sharing. However, again, there's a drawback with this particular method. The data on the individual device will not be sufficient and the changes or the updates will be limited to just the user's experience rather than the actual trends that are occurring out there. 
Now, what do I mean by that? So, say for example, we take our smart keyboard example, right? Over here, what's happening if user one comes across a particular slang? Say we have two users, and user one comes across a particular slang, say what's up? And user two has never used this particular slang. Now, if the user two types w a s there is a huge possibility that user 2 also gets the suggestion of this particular word in this smart keyboard app. Why is this happening? Because in this particular case, the data is being collected from all the users and then being trained in a centralized database, right? But if we were to consider individual device updates, in this case, if user 1 has come across the new slang was up and the user 2 has never come across it, there's a possibility that user 2 never gets the suggestion for this particular word on his smart keyboard app until and unless he has typed that particular word on his keyboard at some time, right? So this is the major disadvantage of having individual device updates. Now these two above concerns or the above problems can be solved through what is known as federated learning, the topic for this particular video. Right. So now you guys must be clear of why exactly we need federated learning. So let's go ahead and understand it in detail. So let me give you guys a quick uh, review on what is exactly federated learning. So federated learning, unlike the traditional approach, adopts something known as a decentralized decentralized approach. So using this approach, the machine learning algorithms are directly trained on the user's device rather than on the central database, right? So as you guys can see in this particular image, we have uh, these IoT devices or individual devices over here. And rather than sharing the data itself, the raw data that has been collected by the app, we are sharing an updated model. Now, what is this updated model? This is basically uh, the locally trained model on the devices itself. So what's happening here is every time or you can say periodically uh, the data, the new data that has been collected by the individual devices, it has been trained locally and then the updated model that has been uh, trained by the devices is being sent to the central server. right? Now the central server collects all these updated models from all the devices rather than the raw data, right? So over here, the privacy concerns or the data privacy concerns have been solved directly, right? So we are not sharing the data directly, but we're sharing the updated model version that has been trained on the devices itself with the central server. Now this central server basically acts as a leader, which we discussed in our example initially. Now this leader is going to combine or collaborate all these updated models and come up with a global model that is come up with one particular solution and send that solution or share that solution with all the users or all the devices that are available. Right. So let us look at it quickly once again. So each device is going to download the current global model that the central server sends and it is going to train it locally using the private data. Right, so no sharing of data is happening in federated learning. Now, once the local training is complete, the device is going to generate an update that summarizes the patterns it learned. Right, so it is not sharing the data. I'm repeating once again, it is only sharing the patterns or the new learnings that has been found by the device. It could be any learning. So say, for example, this particular model gets to know that usually thank is followed by you. So this particular finding is going to be shared with the central server, right? So this update is going to be a set of model parameters, not the actual user data, right? So these updates are going to be encrypted. This particular update or this particular finding is going to be sent in an encrypted mode to the central server. So this technique is also known as secure aggregation. Now what the secure aggregation does is basically secure aggregation. 
Now, what the secure aggregation does is basically it ensures that individual updates cannot be traced back to a specific user. Right? So, all the risk of data privacy or privacy concerns have been solved through federated learning as we just saw in this particular image. Now, in the end, the central server is going to combine all the updates from the millions of devices to improve the global model, right? And this process is going to use algorithms like federated averaging, right? So, the improved global model is going to be sent back to all the devices, making the app smarter without ever sharing any private data. So, over here there is another image for your understanding. So, this is the particular example. Thank you for the uh, the person has only typed F and he's getting the suggestion of feedback which is appropriate in this case. So all the local data are being uh, trained locally and the updates are being sent in an encrypted format to the central server. The central server combines all these local updates and sends a new global model to all the users. Right. So this is basically how federated learning works in short. So these are some of the applications of federated learning. So one is self-driving car, one is digital healthcare, interest based advertising, industry, personalizing smartphone, bank fraud detection and many more, right? So this is only the beginning. What have we learned? Our major learning is that we can learn from everyone without learning about anyone. So this is basically how you can summarize federated learning. All right. So I hope you guys were able to get some insights out of this video and I hope you guys got a hang of federated learning. If you guys like the video, do hit the like button and thank you and see you in the next video.